Hey everyone, and welcome to the Webflow live stream. My name is Josh Lowe, Senior Community Advocate here at Webflow, and I'm coming to you from Vancouver, Canada. We had a live stream earlier, but due to technical difficulties, we are uh, recording this, and so that you are watching a recording. Um, uh, if you haven't seen me before, I am the new guy, so it's a pleasure to meet you. If you have seen me before, it's probably because you enjoy the occasional web design battles through the Reloom Design League. So shout out to Reloom and all the Loomers out there. Uh, so it is such an honor to be with you guys. Guys, um, the best community in the world, the Webflow community. So welcome. Uh, really excited for today's stream. Uh, we are diving deep into the creative process behind Webflow's new homepage. And the format of the stream is more of a show and tell, uh, or should I say flow and tell? Uh, yeah, horrible dad jokes. I know. Uh, I'm going to try to reach uh, Vlad's level of dad jokes one day. So uh, fun fact, Webflow's homepage was actually done by an award-winning design agency called off brand uh, for all you agencies out there, you might be wondering, how do I capture the attention of a major company like Webflow? Well, today we are going to learn from the team and we're going to show you uh, more of their designs, share their stories and unpack their creative process. So um, we are going to kick off this uh, show with not just one, two, but three guests from off brand. So the best way to introduce them is with a fancy video. So cue the sizzle reel. What a sizzle reel. We have Stu, Ross, and Stu in the house. How are you guys doing? Good, yeah, thanks. good thanks, man. All right. Good to fantastic. see you again. Yeah, yeah. This is a take two. <laughs> take two. <laughs> um, all right. Well, for those who don't know about Off Brand, tell us a little bit about like who you are, what you do. So, um, Ross, let's let's start with you. Yeah, sure. So, uh, we're uh, an agency about three years old. We have uh, covered a lot of bases, mainly over strategy, design, development, motion, and inside the motion bracket, we've got 3D, 2D, real time. Um, yeah, so we're we're good to cover most things. Awesome, amazing. And how big is your team? Uh, so our team is about ten core members um, okay. across two offices. We've got offices in Glasgow, where I am, offices in London where Ross is, Stu Smith on the feed as well. He's okay. in Norwich, so close to London. And then nice. we've got a bunch of other team members around the world. Uh, lots of people in Italy. So I'm going to give a shout out to Federico, who was really important on this. And then, yeah, people scattered around beyond that. Okay, awesome. Um, and off-brand, the name, where, where did it come from? Uh, it's actually quite a funny story. Uh, we, uh, so... Three years ago, start of COVID, me and Stuart um, were looking to uh, start an agency together. Um, we'd had previous experience in relevant industries, um, and uh, we had no clients. Uh, we had no portfolio, so we decided to invent a company, um, and we called that company Off Apologies. It was a okay. rude uh, card shop, so it was kind of a bit of a juxtaposition on the greetings card. Um, oh, interesting. But yeah, so from that um we kind of decided to lean into that a little bit and you know the name off brand is kind of uh emphasis on stepping away from industry norms uh embracing unique design solutions and uh defying the mainstream okay um right well speaking of that i actually want to share a little bit about uh your website as you guys share um let's switch here give me a sec and you don't realize right. how heavy these sure sure mics are until you get them in your hand 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is your website here. Um, I mean, you guys are really pushing the limits here, and I love how you can actually swap between dark mode, light mode. Um, it's actually going off by my native uh, systems settings, which is great. But, uh, I mean, you guys are pushing the limits with what you can do with Webflow. So how did you guys find out about Webflow in the first place? Uh, yeah, so actually, uh, when we were starting things out, um, our development was all done in kind of vanilla grassroots stuff. So vanilla JS, HTML, CSS, um, Photoshop for UI design, um, and then maybe a bit of XD, um, which we never really liked. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, my friend Connor uh, told me about this amazing product that he'd used, and it was called Webflow. And for me, it was amazing because on the surface of it, it just replaced uh, my whole process um, okay. straight up. So that, yeah, right from the get-go, we as an agency were using Webflow um, for every single one of our builds. Okay, got it. So uh, it, how did you, yeah. Uh, sorry, and, and actually even as a design tool, because it, it, it was just so quick to mock things. Was it because that you found Webflow that made you like to become an agency? Like what was the story be behind like how you guys formed and what, what made you decide to just do agency work? Well, uh, we actually, we had, um, we were working in kind of similar industries and then COVID happened. Um, and uh, my uh, job itself was the industry. Uh, I did a lot of stuff in uh, nightlife entertainment. So uh, okay. putting on events. So that just died and I had a lot of experience and Stuart had a lot of experience working an IBM developer and strategy consultant. So um, we thought it would be a really good idea to start an agency together. And it was a bit of a pipe dream, but then, you know, you get your hands on some good tools and it becomes a reality. So, yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Well, I'm excited to dive deep into like the, the Webflow homepage you guys we're part of the redesign, so uh, let's let's show a little bit about that over here. Okay, so um, Stu Smith, I think um, this is you. You're helping with concepting it together, and I know you're just going to share a little bit about that in Figma. So, um, how about we dive right into it and uh, share about like the the pitch, or actually, let's talk about the the story of how you, you got the gig to redesign Webflow's new homepage. I oh. think you might be on mute, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> That's so classic, Stu. <laughs> what, me? Yeah, uh, no, Stu Smith, uh, you might have pressed the button you on the side. Am mic. I still unmuted? There you go, there you go, right now. there you go, there you go. There you go. I just found out there's two mute buttons and I had both of them on. So I'm good. <laughs> that is classic me. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think I was going to say that Stu Ross, um, you've got some insight into how we got this gig. Um, you guys did a great job just pulling that op opportunity together. And it was a connection through um, a common friend, mutual friend. Uh, right. Okay. So, yeah. But, um I guess uh, we got to give a shout out to uh, another community member um, for this, actually two of them. Um, first of all, uh, right at the back at the genesis of it, Timothy Ricks, good shout out to you. Nice. Um, through Timothy Ricks, uh, we have met a lot of people. One of them is uh, Skylar, um, mm. who a lot of you guys in the chat will know. Um, and uh, he had, we'd been chatting to him uh, on and off and then he got the gig at Webflow. Um, so he kind of knew about our work and when McGuire um, I had the idea to kind of up the stakes of the, the Webflow homepage. Um, Skylar gave us as a recommendation and Maguire really liked our work. So that's kind of how we were led into it. Got it. Okay. Um, so it pays to be part of the community. Huge. It's all about definitely. the connections. Yeah. Okay. Um, Stu, I want to jump right into Figma and um, let's just share a little bit about your process of kicking off um the 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 websites concepting all that stuff so i'll hand it over to you yeah sure so i think one of the main secrets that we had was when we first had our opportunity to pitch 
we invested quite a bit of time into trying to trying to visually illustrate how we would create a story with WebGL with a 3D experience. So we came up with these three core um, experiences that show how um, one option can take you through something as you scroll down. Uh, one can kind of get you to pan across a scene um, that is that has some depth to it. And the other one is actually to travel forwards, you know, like through your screen, through a 3D experience. So that's what the scrolly telling map exploration and depth exploration um, options were. And that did catch the eye of the team. Um, so we built some really good trust with them um, over time with this. Um, and then as as we continue to work with them, we just collected some just some good reference materials for how maybe we can be um, elevating the product, uh, which is the designer. Maybe if we can break things apart or give some space between things. Um, so that served as a good way of bringing things together initially. And then we just we kind of just went off and explored how we can just put some composition together, just very simple flat compositions, um, seeing how we can you know, maneuver the designer or use it. Um, and then actually as a second round, we developed this way of handing over prototypes to uh, the, the Webflow team so that they can actually try and, you know, trigger the movements of how, you know, the entry to um, the hero section would work, for instance. So this is our concept one that we showed where the designer itself becomes a portal out of which really nice. um, these um, sandboxes arrive. Um, and then we had concept two, which was the introduction of this idea that we had called the power lines. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, are you seeing the power lines? I hope so. Um, uh, maybe if I go back, I think there's a lag on your end, maybe. I am not seeing the power lines. That's weird. Why is that? But I know it's in a future slide. So it's all good. Um, it's actually a slide behind. Um, let me just see if I can move forward. Okay, sure. Um, it's moving forward like a slide ahead for you from where I'm at currently, which is interesting. Okay. So yeah, we're just toggling through the, the concepts essentially. Um, and this one was a strange one where we had the idea of using the idea of inception where you kind of actually step a, step outside of the live home page. And you can actually change, for instance, in this example, the color of the background. So you, the the color panel from the designer, the Webflow designer, would come up, and you could actually select blue to change change the mm. background. So that that was a mad idea that we had. Um, but really, what it came down to was essentially these three pieces. So on the left, you can see the power lines now, mm -hmm. um, and the team liked these things in different ways. Um, and it turned out that Vlad in one of our meetings really, really liked this one. <laughs> this is genuine proof of Vlad appreciating our work. <laughs> um, so needless to say, this this was the concept that was really well loved. And um, this this is where we needed to then explore how we could create performative 3D objects. You know, this was the challenge. So how could we do that? So we looked into different um, explorations um, with some 3D artists that we work with. And um, these are the kinds of things that we looked into. And also we looked into what kind of sandbox sites we could use in mm. our um, storytelling exercise on, on the 3D section. So we went from an email service to um, a banking website to an air purifier website, university insurance, um, a water bottle, and even to an airline. Um, but then as we um, brought that together, we settled on these three, which was the banking site, the air purifier, and the emails. And these ones went through some iterations. The one on the right really did go through some iterations, but we got there. Um, and this is what we settled on um, for the three sandboxes that we'd break apart and convert into these 3D scenes that we made. Now, this one we wanted to highlight because this we had a great time just working closely with the Webflow team. Um, and they take so much care over the product um, that we created quite a few iterations. <laughs> I mean, if you can see that, Figma wow. struggles with this sometimes. They're a bit pixelated because there's so many. Um, but yeah, we went through an awful lot. And if you just take um, a large picture overview, this is how many we went through. We ended up wow. with these ones. So um, it, it just shows just the collaboration that we managed to have with the team. And it was um, just a really good experience.
Um, so that's just an insight really of some of the things that we did. And here's even some old explorations we did. Um, oh, I love this as well. So yeah, you <laughs> got to give, got to give props to, uh, Stuart here. You meticulously crafted every single interaction in multiple all in stages in the Figma. Yeah. Yeah. If you saw all the little elements that bring these together, there's quite a few, but, um, yeah, it was good fun. Really good fun doing yeah. it. Wow. That's so great. Um, okay. Now you guys use, uh, WebGL and GSAP to make this all come alive. Right. So, um, let's dive into that. Uh, Ross, I know you had help from Federico. He is the pro, but I also see you as the expert as well. So, uh, let's, let's dive into your, your screen share and, uh, talk a little bit about that. I've got a little surface, uh, understanding of it, but yeah, um, WebGL web graphics library, um, it's, it's, a API for JavaScript that allows you to render things in a canvas. Um, so you can do a 2d, 3d, um, sorry, I'm moving my mic away from my hand now. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's really performing. Uh, you can do some crazy stuff in it. Um, quite hard to learn, but, um, uh, yeah, as, as you said, I'm not the expert, but yeah, we did use, uh, that we used OGL, um, uh, to, uh, run the interactive experience at the top of the Webflow homepage. Everything else is good old, um, CSS and GSEP. Um, so vanilla JavaScript as well, but yeah. Okay. Fantastic. I'll, um, and I'll share my, I'll share the build just, yeah, please. just for something to look at. And while you're doing that, maybe we can hop into Figma again. Um, and Stu, I'll follow you. You guys had some uh, concept of how you manage the, the layers. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, to kind of, so there's a tricky thing with WebGL, uh, it doesn't really play too well with lots of depth layers. So how we faked that was to generate some alpha transparency layers. So, um, different layers have, uh, different shades, which correspond to different, um, depths. And if you see kind of the mockups, this is kind of how it's structured. So every single element layered on top of each other has a different color. And that is kind of how they sit in space. Mm. Uh, if you can imagine it like that, we don't actually have the link to the, to the, to the play playground. That would have been quite good. But if you turn it on its side, it's, it like disappears, oh, uh, wow. apart from the 3d models, because it's all completely flat, but in kind of 3d space. And this is essentially you're conceptualizing this, this part of the website. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So if you were to it's rotate nice. this, uh, 90 degrees, um, you would see that everything is, um, pixel thin, um, oh, wow. apart from the models, okay. which actually have some depth, some real depth to them. But yeah, everything, uh, as you saw in the Figma is, uh, on a plane and it's a, just a texture. So, okay. um, all this. of that, all of these, all of these elements, all of these boxes, all of these, uh, text cutouts, everything is just, a, a web P image that, um, Oh, that's it. Wow. It's projected onto a, onto a plane and then okay. moved around and interacted with, but yeah. Pretty amazing. You know, uh, it's funny to look at, um, people's Figma file cause it's, this is the reality, right? Like actually it's pretty clean right now. Um, but it's kind of like, you know, when you, oh, there it is. There, there you is. go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going to a so, friend's uh, party and then you, there's that one room where you just chuck everything in and everything <laughs> else is all pretty. So this, this is the room. <laughs> Yeah. yeah well, if you focus in on specific areas you'll you'll see some some nice tidy bits but this is yeah. this is actually an <laughs> overview of how we 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 had had to we had to have a workflow for how we named things because okay. we were doing such quick iterative um construction of all this stuff um so we were changing assets every like two like hours um so wow. we had to have we developed like a naming system so ui2 element one ui2 you know uh it's not uh, rocket science but it, it enabled us to have a pretty quick workflow wow that is amazing um okay do you want to switch over to the webflow designer mm, sure yeah um in terms of development uh, so I, I was the Webflow developer on the project. Um, Federico did all the fancy WebGL stuff. Um, the whole um, idea behind the website, and we had a kind of a rough brief, um, was to uh, maintain performance, um, even make it better. Um, you have an insane amount of traffic coming to the Webflow homepage every day. So 
um, it was all about maintaining that, making it better. So we had a lot of uh, conversations and everything that we did basically was geared towards making um, uh, everything a lot faster. So we were saving kilobytes everywhere we could. Um, mm. We built this designer as uh, the, the actual Webflow designer inside the Webflow designer using divs <laughs> and awesome. uh, svgs you you can also if you zoom in uh see little hover states as well uh on the live site uh, so there's all these little details um and that allowed us to save quite a few kilobytes over using either pngs or svgs um also because we had to load text files we had to take the text files that we were putting inside the designer we mm -hmm. stripped them out of all the characters that we weren't going to use, made sure there were WAF 2s, all of that to save some kilobytes. Amazing. Um, and yeah, there was um, uh, other considerations as well, like uh, our use of uh, GSEP. Um, we, uh, we pretty much uh, used that um, GSEP and CSS for all of the interactions throughout the website. Okay. Um, the reason for this is all, another performance uh, saving metric but it, it was just that when we were prototyping these interactions that you're playing with now um while we could probably do them with webflow there were certain things uh that the webflow library ix2 just couldn't do mm. um that gsap could so like callbacks event listeners all that sort of stuff that we really really needed um so we just decided to purely use gsap because that would save us another 100 or so kilobytes by not loading the ix2 library so yeah okay. there was a lot of considerations when we came into dev um to make it as performative as we could very interesting this here uh so this was a gsap you're using gsap to make this interaction yeah okay i loved it it's it's amazing how like whatever apps you click it comes in order it's so great i mean uh I don't suppose it's very interesting for most of the people on this, but um, I'm happy to uh, share what the code base for that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> we can briefly. probably save that for those who make a request. So, <laughs> sure, no, that's really great. It's amazing. Um, okay, now I have to ask you: um, Were there any considerations into using Spline, seeing as that was kind of uh, one of the main things that were uh, promoted on on the page? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that one again. Uh, so there was a bit of controversy in the community um, when people started discovering that it wasn't Spline, but our kind of get out of jail free card, well, we have two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is that we didn't have access to the Spline integration when we were developing the site. Um, so, you know, when you guys got access to it, we got access to it. The second and probably more important reason is that our team um, is highly proficient in WebGL, uh, 3JS already. Um, so uh, us moving specifically to a tool that we hadn't used that much just to be in line with it would have meant would have meant that we probably wouldn't have hit the timelines. It just is not. It's it wouldn't have been great project management. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I think all that said, though, we we have been using Spline since, and we do like Spline. Spline is great. Yeah, uh, like absolutely no, like nothing against Spline. It's such a great tool, so fun to play with. Uh, we met the guys uh, at the conference. Um, oh, great. Uh, shout out to Nikki. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, I guess uh, it, there's nothing nothing wrong with Spline. It's amazing. Yeah, I know. It'll be interesting to see what you guys do with it now with the, with the new integration. A lot of, lot of creative control there. Um, okay, so uh, that wraps it up for the technical side. Thank you for sharing. That was juicy, really amazing. Uh, if there were, if there's one thing that you can take away from all this to tell other agencies in a similar situation, like a tight scope uh, and deadline, uh, what would it be? I think uh, Ross, you had something to share. Uh, yeah, well, uh, if it's for a similar scope, tight deadlines, prepare to work hard, long hours, don't, you're not going to get any sleep. Uh, it's going to be pretty rough. Um, but it's all pushing towards that, that goal, that, that chalice, um, of doing the Webflow homepage. So yeah, you got to make it happen. Um, 
ensure your team's communication is as tight as it can be and also ensure your communication with your client is as tight as that can be because otherwise it's just going to derail um project management super super important um me and Stuart, the project managers on our side um on the webflow side we were blessed um, by sophia shout out sophia um an amazing project manager on the webflow side of things who without her help uh the process definitely wouldn't have come through on time i don't think so yeah awesome. okay yeah great tips um for those who are looking into get into webgl gsap all the amazing libraries like oh what, what's some advice where, where can they start uh, uh yeah i don't want to peg anyone uh or like tout anyone but there's definitely some community members that we'd recommend we started out and we learned a lot from uh, timothy ricks uh more recently uh we work with uh yulia yulia van Eck. hello uh yeah shout out to you both um uh there's lots of community i'd, I'd stick around on on youtube um there's great tutorial tutorials there you'll find out very quickly who you like okay um yeah watching aaron streams as well Yes, yes, for sure, definitely. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and let's see here uh, if we have some questions. Well, I think we will, if there are any questions related to this, we will get back to you. Make sure to add it in the comments and we will uh, address that. I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, some around GCEP and WebGL. So, um, okay, and finally, what advice would you give to other agencies wanting to capture the attention uh, of a big company like Webflow? What would you say to that? Yeah, I think um, I think we didn't really know how we got Webflow overall, so who knows really? But I think a few things, um, like you've just asked, if you don't know how um, you know a, a tool works, WebGL is a great example of one that's pretty difficult to get all the way into. You can partner with great freelancers and not wait for client work. Just build cool stuff that that you think you can show people. And then the other thing for us that we've learned over the last couple of years is to take pitching really, really seriously, put a lot of work into it, build stuff, show clients what your ideas are, make nice pitch materials. It always makes a big difference. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much. That wraps up uh, our presentation. So uh, is there anything, anything that you'd like to share with the community or how they can get a hold of you guys if they want to reach out? I think we're on all the usual channels. You can find us on okay. Twitter. We do a lot of tweeting. Um, you can get in touch through our website. Uh, and you uh, your handle comment is, on this video. is it off-brand or it's off-brand? I actually don't know what our handle is. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, a, bit of a, it's a bit of a split, actually. Uh, Twitter, uh, it's off-brand, itsoffbrand.com. It's off okay. uh, Instagram, we are offbrand.studio. Um, yes. But yeah, right, we it's, unfortunately couldn't get the clean sweeps on all of our usernames. So okay, no worries. We will add that into the description. So um, all right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was an amazing time together. And uh, for those of you, um, again, you have any questions, add it in the comments. So that's all we got. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.